Hi, everybody. My name is Vicki Lee. If you like my teaching, please like, share, and subscribe. Well, we are moving forward, part six in our series of Jesus Understands Your Suffering. And we're going to get into this part today that's going to talk about something. And many of you, whether you believe in Christ or you don't, stay tuned because you're going to listen to this and you're going to go, yeah, <laughs> I've always felt that way. Well, in Jesus' life, he came, God in the flesh came, born of a lowly Hebrew virgin. He came to this world. He was perfect, but yet he had humanity. He had a human body, and he lived through it, and things happened to him that I don't think will ever happen to us. He suffered more than we will ever know, particularly in his death. So for us to say, you don't understand, I'm doing this series so that we can understand that he understand he gets it he went through some stuff and I have talked if you look through the totality of my speaking I have taken the church to the cleaners in my speaking I have sat I have raised my voice I have pointed my finger at her and I have told her clean it up do not play politics do not play with what happens in God's house. Jesus Christ is going to wind up going into the temple right before he dies, and he's going to take a whip, and he whips people, and he tells them, get out, because you're bringing games into my temple, and my father's house is a house, a prayer. And then he took over the temple for a few days, and he prayed, and he taught. That's what's supposed to happen in the temple. And then we were supposed to go out and be the change agent like his apostles and his disciples were to help a hurting, dying world. That's how pure it is. And so if you are a person who say, I don't go to church because I don't like what they do there. It's political. I don't like the politics. I don't like what I see. You're not alone. Jesus felt the same way. And he was such a powerhouse that not only did they give him a hard time when he was around them at the temple, um, they came and followed him and just catcalled him and were always there causing trouble. They're going to be the ones who wind up being the spearheads for his crucifixion, which was right exactly where God wanted him because the perfect sacrifice had to be made. But I'm saying all of this because I keep saying it's not a religion. It's a relationship. And let's see what Jesus has to say about the religious people in his day. The religious. I'm not talking about the spiritual. I'm talking about the religious. Matthew 23, we're going to start at verse 13. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. Think about that. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Let's let that sink in. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make him twice as much a child of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the God of the temple is bound by that oath. You blind fools. Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gift of the altar is bound by that oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And anyone who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, 
justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides. You strain out of a gnat. You strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean. And if you look back in my teachings, I did a speaking on what's in your cup. Go back and look at that. That's exactly what this is talking about. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You build tombs for the prophets. Let me say that again. You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would have not taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Go ahead then and complete what your ancestors started. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you, es you escape being condemned to hell? Therefore, I am sending you prophets and sages and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue them from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come on this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as sin gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of of the Lord. If you have looked at the hypocrisy in churches, if you have looked at leaders that others follow because they're lobotomized, and you look at that and you say, that cup is dirty, then you're not alone. If you think that is disgusting, you're not alone. If you think that should be avenged and not stand. You're not alone. That's how Jesus Christ felt about it. That's a lot of scripture, isn't it? And he's underscoring again and again and again, you hypocrites, 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 hypocrites. There are some of you listening to the sound of my voice. And I talked about this when I talked about what's in your cup. Go back and listen to that reading. If you're saying, I'm not going down to the local church because I see it. I see it from a distance. I'm not partaking in that. That cup is dirty and they're going to give it to me to drink from and I'm not doing it. It's not even sanitary spiritually to do. And they act like they have it together and they act holier than thou. And I see all these people following and I'm not going to do it. Congratulations to you for having the discernment not to do it. I have talked about the inner quarters of churches. I have said, do not play along with the politics. If you are righteous, fight the good fight. Stand against it. I have spoken till I'm blue in the face. And people don't always like having me in churches because I have the prophetic gift. And what does he say? What have you done to my prophets? I send my prophets through your doors. My prophets speak to you and you kill them. You run them out. And you're going to pay the price for that. And it's coming at you. And it was the religious that he said, you go out to find that one convert, you're going to hell, and then you convert them to take you to hell with them. 
And as you sit there, and as I sit there today, and we live in this Laodicean age, Revelation 3, I talk about the church of Laodicea all the time. Look for the church of Laodicea in chapter 3 of Revelation. He said, you think you're rich, but you're poor. You're not hot. You're not cold. You won't be my spiritual coast guard. You will not go into those waters. And I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. That's in the age we live in today. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're not changing their mind about unrighteousness. They have never changed their mind about unholiness. I don't care how good it is in the free world. I don't care how much technology we have. He's saying to them, you want the gift that comes to the altar, but I want the sacredness of the altar coming through. You're hypocritical. And you're taking people the wrong way and you're vipers and you look good from the outside, but you're dead. Have you ever suffered from this? I talk to people, whoever hears the sound of my voice, have you ever suffered from this? Have you ever seen it go on? Have you ever seen the leaders of churches that are just evil? I taught in repentance of the church and the Holy Spirit told me, go further, go further, go further. If you're a good Catholic, I'll say it again. You woke up one day and saw the headlines where the denomination that you love with all your heart and you love God, the Trinity, with all your heart. You woke up one day to see the headlines that priests had been molesting young boys for years. Penn State, the same thing happened. It was disgusting and it was covered over, but not to a God who sees it all. And I've talked about that nonstop. And I have pointed and people tell me when you're trying to make a point, you point. And I do. And I'm pointing. And Jesus Christ was pointing and saying, this is you. And these are the very religious leaders that are going to have him crucified. If you suffer this, please understand the most important thing I'm going to say is what I keep saying. It's not a religion. These people, these whitewashed sepulchers, these vipers, these people who will go a long way to make a convert and they're going straight to hell because they don't belong to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they may be heading up a church. I'm not saying every church is bad. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm saying be very discerning. And if you are in the middle of a church and you know this is what's going on, fight the good fight. And if they won't respond, remove yourself. Start your own ministry if you have to find the group in the body of Christ that truly loves him and be representative of that. Don't go along to get along. Don't do it. See, I have a very prophetic gift. And in this Laodicean age, I've been sent into churches. And I have seen, because as the prophets, we see. We see through the walls. We see through the leadership. God has tapped me on the shoulder as I have made up a bed one spring. And said, and gave me a message. And then he unfolded all the information to me. And as I spoke into it, they threw me out. I have been thrown out of more than one church. That's not a disgrace for me. That was me doing the prophetic ministry. And he said, you kill out my prophets. This is what you do. See, Jesus suffered. I'm going back to my original point. He suffered under these religious leaders and rulers. There is a person who heads up a ministry and there are some brothers and sisters that I have of Christ. And that person was mentioned just the other day in passing. And they were saying, there's a real darkness around that person. And I said, yes, there is. And I tried to go into their ministry and I tried to serve and I couldn't because I'm a prophetic gift that will not lobotomize. And the more they did, they started attacking me without cause. 
And the more they did, the more I looked at them and I knew what they just did then. And they couldn't wait to either run me out or destroy me. It's not legal to kill us, but they destroy in a lot of ways. So I know that suffering. Christ was prophet, priest, and king. And he's talking about how they treated the prophets. So they're following him and catcalling him and giving him all sorts of trouble that's going to lead to him being beaten and bloodied and bruised and torn from limb to limb and hung on a cross. And those religious leaders that were not of God didn't care. But the repercussions of that came, just like he said it would. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they see what you see. If you suffer from this, if you've seen this, if you've been repelled by this, they were as well. If you don't have Christ, his holy scriptures are real and true and blunt. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit don't play. And they bring their scriptures to a world that many times just wants to play and skirt the rules. If you're tired of playing, if you're tired of being played, if you're a Christian who has just wandered off and maybe you've been hurt by the very description of those people, don't get the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit confused with that dirty cup that a religious leader held and that religious leader is going straight to hell because they don't even have God. Come back. Find the body of Christ that truly loves him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. It's truth and you can depend on it. And so as we suffer through these things, especially in this Laodicean age where the church is neither hot nor cold in so many areas. Christ spoke into that, didn't he? In his ministry. He loves you. My name is Vicki Lee. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody.